Hotel Right class, we have a very interesting friend in the office today. I'd like uh, you to say hi to, um, ew, I'm a little scared, Borat? Yikes. It's very nice to meet you. Yes, it is nice to meet you too. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you want to learn about chromosome variation. This is chapter 8 in the 5th edition, and let's get started. Genetic variation can be the difference between members of the same species or different species, right? Allelic variations are always mutations in particular genes of the same species. Those are what we sort of classically talk about as mutations. Major changes in chromosomes or chromosomal aberrations change the entire chromosome structure. They can be called chromosomal mutations, but they're such a big change that they're generally uh, a little bit different than um, what we consider a mutation. Mutation is usually a base pair change. This is an entire change in a chromosome. Nice. Yeah, it is pretty nice. Thank you. There are two major ways we can change the structure of chromosomes. In number one, we change the total amount of genetic information, right? We either delete it, I mean a decrease, a loss, right? Or we can increase it by adding an insertion. This is adding DNA to a chromosome. When the genetic material remains the same, or the amount remains the same, but it's moved around, we'd call it inversion, from moving from one direction to another, or a translocation, which takes a chunk of one chromosome and places it onto another chromosome. In this case, these are non-homologous chromosomes. What do we call a chunk of DNA going from one chromosome to another if they are homologous chromosomes? Hmm? Hmm? Yep, we call that crossing over. Yes! Good work, people. Let's just go through these. Deletions always start with some sort of chromosomal break. It's usually caused by something in the environment. This would be x-rays. Okay, ionizing radiation. Deletions can never revert. They can't come back because we actually lose the DNA. How would that look if we mapped out chromosomes? Look, we're missing this part. It's gone. Deleted. Simple as that. When we delete a large portion of the chromosome, we can have a human disorder, right? That it, it changes the dosage of genes. If you're missing a chunk of a chromosome, you actually have a monosomy in that region. We only have one allele left because the other allele is gone. That can be a dosage problem. One example is the Cree de Schott syndrome. This is the um, <clears throat> online Mendelian inheritance setup where you can look online and go and look at all the known genetic human genetic disorders and what genes they're related to. Um, this one happens to be a deletion of the short arm of chromosome 5. That deletion results in severe mental retardation and physical abnormalities. So as bad or worse than a real trisomy. So missing a big chunk of a chromosome can be a disaster. If we have a duplication, that's where a segment of the chromosome is recopied and then added back in. And that's very simple. This is the duplication, right? This was the original. We made another copy. Now we have two in a row. This again would change the dosage because on the other chromosome, right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, now we have three copies of gene E and three copies of gene F. This could be fine depending on dosage, depending on what it is, or it could be a disaster. How this works when there's a duplication is that it kind of can mess up the alignment in meiosis. Because remember, the homologous chromosomes, pretend this is chromosome 5, and it's partner chromosome 5, right? These guys are the sisters. There's another sister right there. These two are sisters. And they line up because they have the same genes. Remember we talked about in that in meiosis? So this portion, the duplication, has to loop out in order for it to align so that we can get correct meiosis happening. 
An example of some duplications that changes phenotype is in the bar region, the bar region of a Drosophila eyeball. Okay, wild type, you know, has both alleles. Uh, heterozygous bar female has too many, right, of this allele. So there's three total. This one has four total. And then this one also has four total, but there's a complete, right, triplicate of that. Depending on what their DNA looks like, totally changes their phenotype. How do these happen, you might say? Well, it's usually because the chromosomes didn't align properly for some reason, and they result in some unequal crossing over, so that we move, right, this allele up here, and up to there, and this chunk, which is not part of that allele, onto this one, or we just lose it all together. And so now this one has a duplication, right? If one goes one way, this goes to one gamete, this goes to the other, and this is the guy that's the lucky winner, then we have a duplication in that offspring. In the case of another unequal crossing over, we can get a triplicate here too. This is just a table of many uh, human chromosome rearrangements that uh, result from duplications or deletions. And you know we're not going to memorize these. These are for your own benefit, just so you can see the relevance of this part of the topic. Yes! Okay, good. I'm glad you got that. If we look at what happens to chromosomes when they align during prophase 1 of meiosis, again, we'll pretend this is chromosome 6 and chromosome 6, but it's sisters, how if there's a deletion, that that portion has to actually loop out in order to pair up during prophase 1. And in some case, that portion can then be lost on the other chromosome as well. And so that can cause a bigger problem. If you have a chromosome inversion, that's where it breaks in two places and twists itself around and ends up facing the other direction. So we don't, there's no gain or loss of DNA, but just the order where this one sits, where its regulatory regions are, and what genes it's sitting next to can cause changes and can cause problems in, uh, depending on what genes are involved. Now this crazy figure is going to show you what happens when an inversion happens in uh, chromosomes and then what happens during pairing up. Now, I just want you to appreciate that the inversion can cause total disasters during meiosis. But we are not going to memorize what happens. I'm not going to ask you about, you know, which ones are viable and which ones are non-viable. So the homework problems in this section that talk about these things, it's just much more complicated than we have time to get into. I love it, but it's just much, much more than we can cover in, in this course. I have come here to greatest university in the world. Yes, I know. I, I, it is nice that, you know, I'm, I'm not making you guys learn as much as you'd have to in maybe some other place. Again, here's another type of inversion that includes the centromere, right? The other one didn't, and you can see the difference in the gametes. Not quite as a disaster as the one that does not include the centromere, but non-viable gametes means dead, right? So those are not going to work. So that's not actually good, okay? Dead usually is bad. Okay, here's a question for you. And you need to do this and screenshot and upload. Um, that'll probably be some homework assignment in October 8th. Isn't that where we were supposed to be doing chromos? Okay, so please do this. And um, yeah, that'd be really great if you could do that. <laughs> okay, it's, it's not a joke. Okay, so... Um, it's probably a good time for, for you to go. We're, we're done with this little lecture capture. Say goodbye. Yeah, goodbye.